This time, his customer was the CIA, and he was developing a spy plane with the deceptive designation U-2 for utility plane. By 1950, radar was powerful enough to see 10 miles high. That was also the altitude limit for Russian interceptors. So Kelly Johnson designed a plane that would fly higher than both. The U-2 could go beyond 70,000 feet, more than 13 miles high. The U-2 was a remarkable concept in that it was very simple. It was basically a high-flying uh, sailplane powered by a jet engine. The U-2's first flight was in August 1955. A year later, it began operating over the Soviet Union, giving the U.S. an unprecedented look behind the Iron Curtain. This ability to see what the enemy is doing, to photograph what's going on in the Soviet Union so that you can actually discern um, on the ground what the facilities are doing, what the plants are doing, what nuclear facilities are, whether they're exploding atomic weapons. Uh, this ability, in a sense, to photograph the Earth and to see what's going on in your enemy's territories. At last, the true breadth of the Soviet armory could be accurately documented. Flying and photographing 13 miles above the Earth, the U-2 enjoyed unobstructed access over enemy soil. But on May 1st, 1960, the U-2's cover was blown sky high. While on a secret CIA mission to photograph Soviet ICBMs, U-2 pilot Gary Powers was shot down over the city of Sverdlovsk by the blast effect from a Russian surface-to-air missile. Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev showed the world pieces of the destroyed airplane to prove that the Americans had been spying. Powers was put on trial and sentenced to 10 years of prison and hard labor. But two years later, he was repatriated in a prisoner exchange for a Russian spy. He made it home in time to witness the U-2's finest hour. In October of 1962, photographs taken by a U-2 revealed Soviet missile installations in Cuba, less than 100 miles from the Florida Keys. For 13 days, the Cuban Missile Crisis brought the world to the brink of nuclear war, until the Russians agreed to dismantle the installations. But the crisis also illustrated the importance of aerial surveillance and spy planes. The U-2 has patrolled the skies ever since and seen action in both Gulf Wars. After the Powers fiasco, however, it never again flew over the Soviet Union. 